How's it going YouTube? Got 4th Star TCG here and today I'm back with another video. We are kicking off our Guardians Rising deck coverage and first off we are going over possibly the most highly anticipated sort of full deck to come out of the new Guardians Rising expansion. I am personally super hyped about this deck. I've been wanting to play it for a very long time so I spent uh, pretty much most of yesterday and uh, this morning building this deck, trading for the cards, uh, making alterations, and getting it to be the best possible version to show to you guys. So here we go, as I'm sure you know by the video <laughs> video thumbnail, we are going over Tapu Koko GX. Uh, I am so excited to play this deck, uh, I've been really hyped to play this deck for a long time and I'm so happy that it's finally here. So what do all the cards do? First off, we have Tapu Koko GX, which is the star of the deck. It is a basic 170 HP lightning Pokemon with the ability Arrow Trail. When you play this Pokemon from your hand on your bench during your turn, you may move any number of lightning energy from your other Pokemon to this Pokemon. If you do, switch this Pokemon with your active Pokemon. So it's very similar to the old Dragonite EX's bust in, but it's better in every way because it has much better attacks and uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so basically, whenever we play Tapu Koko GX down, we can absorb lightning energy from all of our other Pokemon and just switch it into the active, which is great. Uh, it helps us a lot to accelerate. Uh, getting three energy down for its attacks would seem difficult because it has to be three lightning. There's no double colorless or anything in there. But uh, with Max Elixir and the Arrow Trail ability, it's really easy to get a Tapu Koko powered up. So its attacks, pretty simple, a Sky High Claws for 3 Lightning Energy, or 2 Lightning and a Colorless, but you're always going to be using 3 Lightning, does 130 damage, nothing else, no effects, and its GX attack, Tapu Thunder GX, does 50 damage, times the amount of energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So, this is really good, this is sort of the uh, standard formula for GXs now, we have a sort of regular attack that does a good amount of damage and then we just have a nuke GX attack uh, which is going to be able to one shot pretty much anything uh, provided that it's uh, provided that our opponent has energy on the field which they probably will have at least four energy on the field uh, so that's just that's it's a great GX attack uh, it's not as good as some of the other GX attacks mainly because it's reliant on your opponent, so your opponent can simply not play energy. But again, if they don't play energy, then they're setting themselves back in the game. So they can play around the GX attack, but it's very difficult to do so. No weakness, which is fantastic for going up against fighting because this deck really doesn't have an auto loss. Uh, no resistance as well, which is kind of fine. Uh, lightning Pokemon are usually resistant to metal, and there's no metal decks in the format, so that's really not... Uh, not having a resistance is a big issue there. And a two retreat cost, which is a little annoying, but because of our mobility with Arrow Trail, retreating isn't a problem. We also have two copies of Raikou. Uh, this is just wonderful when we play it in our sort of deck engine that I'm going to go over uh, later. The ability Shining Body, if it's got lightning energy attached to it, any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks is reduced by 20. And then Thunder Lance, 50 plus 20 more for each lightning energy attached to this Pokemon. It's a great one prize attacker. It's also a target for our max elixirs because often we don't want to play our Tapu Kokos down until we really have to to uh, use that arrow trail ability to save it for when we really need it. So uh, targeting our Raikus with max elixirs is great. Um, and these Raikus are, have a lot of staying power. We also have one copy of Jolteon EX. This is just a great card in this deck. A Flash Ray. Uh, we can stop damage from basic Pokemon which is great. It also has free retreat, so if something gets knocked out, we can just throw it up into the active and uh, sort of go from there, which is always wonderful. We have two copies of Shaman EX for the draw power. Fairly standard, a lot of decks will run to Shaman, and we also have our one copy of Tapu Lele GX. I was lucky enough to pull the hyper rare version of Tapu Lele in the few packs that I opened, so I'm very happy that I don't have to trade like 50 something for this, uh, <laughs> for this Tapu Lele. So Tapu Lele, a amazing new card from Guardians Rising, the ability Wonder Tag when you play it, it's basically Jirachi EX but better in every way. Um, 
It's got 170 HP, so it can't be knocked out as easily. Uh, Wonder Tag, just the same ability as Stellar Guidance, and Energy Drive is basically Arrow Ball and X Ball. Uh, it does 20 damage times, number, uh, times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon, not affected by weakness and resistance. Uh, Tapu Cura GX is useless because we aren't playing any Psychic Energy, but if we were, we could heal, two, uh, heal all damage from two of our benched Pokemon. Tapu Lele GX, again, not a bad attacker, not a bad target for Max Elixirs if we need to use it. So that's our Pokemon lineup. Uh, so now into the tools. I have one copy of Escape Rope. I wasn't playing any switching cards because of Tapu Koko, but then I realized that it's possible for our opponent to Lysander stall us by sort of bringing up a bench Tapu Koko, uh, and it's difficult to get that Tapu Koko out of the active if we've already used our Arrow Trail sort of late in the game. So Escape Rope is there for late game if we get Lysander stalled. Uh, but generally we're so mobile that we don't really need float stones or anything more than one escape rope. One copy of Field Blower, this deck is extremely reliant on abilities, so if your opponent gets out a Garbodor, Field Blower can remove that float stone. It's also very helpful for removing stadiums like Silent Lab, which shut down your Shamans, your Raikus, and your Tapu Kokos, and your Tapu Leles. Uh, basically Silent Lab and Garbodor are two major threats to this deck, and Field Blower removes both of them, so that's definitely worthy of a one card inclusion. It's just such a versatile card, we can get rid of, um, yeah, so what it does is you choose two in any combination of Pokemon tool cards and stadium cards and play both yours or your opponents and discard them. Again, this is just great, a card that's probably going to be run uh, one of in lots of decks. Four copies of Max Licks are fairly standard to swarm our bench with as many energy as possible, get everything out as soon as possible. We also played two copies of Max Potion. This is a very useful card in this list. I haven't used it too much, but uh, if you can get the plays off with it, I feel like it could be fantastic. Uh, and I haven't sort of found it a hindrance yet. I haven't been drawing into Max Potions when I wanted to draw into something else. Um, but the idea is that our, our deck is built for longevity, and I'll go over those, uh, those these cards that sort of affect the longevity later. But... Uh, Ideally, we want to power up a Tapu Koko, take a hit, not, not not get knocked out, play down another Tapu Koko, suck up all the energy, move into the active, and then max potion all the damage off so our opponent can't Lysander it and take it out. So this is just a great inclusion in this list. Might be able to cut it down to one, but one copy of Super Rod, fairly standard to bring back Pokemon and energy. Four copies of Trainer's Mail, which are fairly standard in a speed build like ours. Four copies of Ultra Ball to search out all of our Pokemon. Uh, even though we are playing all basic Pokemon, we really don't want to play Nest Ball as so many of our abilities rely on playing from the hand to the bench. So you're going to want to use Ultra Ball in this list. Four copies of VS Seeker to get our supporters back, again fairly standard. We play four copies of Aether Paradise Conservation Area, which uh, getting into the longevity aspect of the deck now. Basic Grass and Basic Lightning Pokemon take 30 less damage from the opponent's attacks. This is really good. I play this over Rough Seas because it's sort of better to stop the damage from occurring in the first place than it is to heal it later on. Uh, plus Rough Seas with decks like Lapras uh, is fairly common in the format, so you really don't want to be aiding them with Rough Seas uh, as they can sort of often knock you out or uh, the rough seas will matter for them but it won't matter for you uh, so four copies of aether paradise conservation area i had it at three but i often found that versus decks like uh, decidui we really want that aether paradise in there to live longer uh, and it's just super helpful to have four stadiums plus a field blower as you're almost always going to be winning the stadium war Two copies of Lysander, again, just a fairly standard uh, inclusion to every list. I feel like two copies of Lysander is so important now that Tapu Lele is in the format. Uh, I've won several games just by Leleing for Lysander. Uh, so you also have to be very careful not to discard both of your Lysanders. So you have uh, supporters in there for uh, Tapu Lele. Discarded supporters weren't a problem with VS Seeker. But now that we have VS Seeker and Tapu Lele, you gotta be a little bit more careful with discarding those supporters. Three copies of N, fairly standard, shuffle our hand and draw a number of prize cards, and it can also help us late game ending our opponent. Uh, 
one copy of Ninja Boy. This is also very useful with Tapu Lele. If we get something stuck in the active, uh, we can Ninja Boy into our Jolteon. Um, if we've got a damaged Tapu Koko, we can Ninja Boy into a Raikou and have it be a one prize attacker. If we throw a Raikou up, we can then Ninja Boy into a Tapu Koko and then do something like a Tapu Thunder GX out of nowhere and surprise our opponent. One copy of Professor Kakui. This is a very important card in this list. Uh, it allows us to hit some wonderful numbers if our opponent has three energy in play. Uh, and if we have a Choice Band plus a Professor Kakui, our Tapu Thunder GX hits 200 damage, which knocks out a lot of uh, GXs like Espeon and Umbreon and Sylveon, which is important now. Um, also Lycanroc, I was playing up against a Lycanroc deck and I was able to knock it out because of the Choice Band Professor Kakui combo with Tapu Thunder GX. So, Professor Kakui, very good. It also allows our Skyclaw to hit 180, which is very good versus uh, EX decks, those big basics. Uh, so we have, if we have a Tapu Koko with a Choice Band, our, uh, which ups, again, if you don't know, ups damage to EX and, or EX and GX by 30, and it can be attached to anything. So that's just fantastic. Uh, so our Skyclaw would do 160 with the Choice Band, plus 20 with Professor Kakui is 180. So that's sort of uh, a great number to have, just to have that open so there is an out to knocking out those uh, big basic EXs. Four copies of Professor Sycamore. I do only play one copy of Choice Band because I want this, uh, I want to play Fighting Fury Belt, which I feel is better in this list if you're building the sort of longevity aspect, which I am with four copies of Aether Paradise Conservation Area and Raikou's. Um, Fighting Fury Belt I think is the far superior tool. I've never found a moment where I wanted a choice band instead of a Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, normally you're not going to be searching for those one hit KOs so the, the extra damage, the extra 20 damage you're losing is kind of negligible. And 10 copies of Lightning Energy to round out the deck. So there we go, that's what we are going with. With this Tapu Koko list, we are looking to live as long as possible, suck up all of our energy, attack our opponent as quickly as possible, just make some great plays. So it looks like we're going up against Water, Psychic. Psychic is sort of the new colorless because of Tapu Lele where every deck is playing it. Uh, but. Mulligan, four energy in our hand. Okay, we see Mega Ray. That is going to be a nice matchup for us because Mega Ray is weak to lightning. And with playing four copies of Aether Paradise, we are probably going to be able to uh, win the Stadium War. Or at least give my opponent a... Oh, goodness, we are mulliganing too much. You don't often mulligan with this deck because um, you play 10 Pokemon and they're all basic. So if you hit any Pokemon, you're getting a start. Uh, one thing that I have noticed with this list is that it can your bench space can get full really quickly, which is uh, slightly difficult. So we're going to drop the Max Potion and the Super Rod here. Those are just useless cards right now. Um, and I'm going to grab out another Raikou. I don't really want to um, put down a Tapu Koko as we miss our Max Elixir, which really stinks. Um, but we are going to Kakui now, uh, which gives us a Trainer Mail and a Fighting Fury Belt. I think I'm going to have to, I suppose I can trainer mail if I'm lucky. Well, I pull an Aether Paradise, which kind of stinks, because now I'm going to need to Ultra Ball all of this away for a Shaman, because we don't have a supporter for next turn, we don't really have anything, um, but our opponent did have a Shaman start, uh, and the Choice Ban, or the Fighting Fury Belt really isn't too much of an issue, uh, as we do play three. Um, so yeah, we'll throw down our Fighting Fury Belt here, and we will just hold. We have a Tapu Lele in hand for next turn to search for a supporter. 
Um, yeah, so my opponent probably will go off here, but we have 160 HP Raikou, so technically it's 180 with Shining Body. And when you throw Aether Paradise in there, your opponent has to hit a 210 damage attack in order to one-shot a one-prize attacker. Which I think is just ridiculous. So that's why Raikou is so good in this list. Um, even Raikou Magnezone is probably a great, uh, great deck now with Aether Paradise. Sort of becoming the stadium that you want to play in that list. So our opponent is going off. They're going to hit the switch. Send out the Rayquaza. If we're able to hit something like a Max Elixir here, uh, we get End. So, but I don't really have a problem with that as we haven't played a lot of our draw supporters. So we still have our Lele and our Shaman. Yep. So there we go. Ideally, I'd want to get a Tapu Koko off this turn, as that would just be a one-hit KO on this Mega Rayquaza. Yeah, your, your electric decks, now that Tapu Koko is sort of the great attacker that electric decks have looked for, uh, it's awesome because you have a great matchup versus stuff like uh, Eveltal and Mega Rayquaza, which are two very important decks. I'm going to throw this energy down here. Um, do I Sycamore or do I end? Um, hmm. I think I'm going to Sycamore and hope to hit something like a Tapu Koko plus Max Elixir. 32 cards in the deck. Um, I don't really want to lose two Sycamores, but does he have a draw supporter? I'm sure he does. I'm sure he has something, so I'm going to end. I really don't want to lose Tapu Koko plus energy. Uh, and there we go, and we hit what we need off of the... Um, if we get like a Fighting Fury Belt here, that would be even better, but we will take the Sycamore, and we just hope that this Max Elixir hits. Yes, okay, wonderful. So now we are going to show off the power of Tapu Koko GX, and we are going to take a knockout on this Mega Rayquaza. So in comes our Tapu Koko, and we are going to Sky High Claws for the knockout. This is sort of exactly what this deck is built to do. Swarm the field with energy, surprise our opponent, bust in with Tapu Koko, and take some easy prizes. So, opponent deciding what to throw up next. but we just went perfectly off in this uh, in this turn and the, the combination of cards that my opponent needs DCE, Mega Turbo, Ray Spirit Link, Mega Ray, Skyfield, and like what? Two more Pokemon? I just don't think that they can get that on this turn. Um, they're going to end here, bring us down to four cards, which is a little painful. Uh, but yeah, we pull off the Shaman here, and we have energy, so it's really not uh, too much of a problem. There's the DCE, the Choice Band onto the Bench Shaman. So they've hit one card they need. And they're just going to Intensifying Burn here. Um, and forfeit. So. What I could have done, yeah, so wonderful first game for Tapu Koko GX. We are able to bust in immediately with our arrow trail ability and take the one shot on that Mega Rayquaza. Uh, we were of course like heavily favored in that matchup because of uh, Mega Rayquaza's weakness, but it's still good to see Tapu Koko working the way it should and winning those matches as it should. 
So we're going up against Fighting Water... Colorless Psychic. And we do win the coin flip, which is nice. Not a bad start here. Fighting Water. What could Fighting Water be? Lapras. Well, what's the fighting in Lapras? Maybe like Lapras Carbink? That would be a little strange. Um, I don't want to lose my energy or my Aether Paradise. This could be like all out Lapras. Which would be really rough. Um, hmm, well, then what do I do? I can drop the escape rope and the lightning energy. Um, grab out a Jolteon. Professor Kikui. And we pull two lightning energy, which is a little annoying. Um, but we're just going to throw down that Jolteon for now. Um, I highly doubt my opponent would attack in this first turn. So, one of the benefits of Tapu Koko is that you can sort of spread out, uh, and we're going to get end anyway, so. One of the benefits with Tapu Koko is that you can spread out your energy. You don't have to commit everything to one Pokemon. So, uh, yeah, my opponent is going to collect here. Uh, Max Elixir would be nice, and we hit it. Lovely. So, I'm going to throw this down here. Uh, attach here. Uh, I want to... Do I want to pressure my opponent? I really don't see... No, I want to play this down here. We'll bump their Rough Seas. Um, as this stadium basically does the exact same thing, but doesn't benefit my opponent. And I could attack here with Tapu Koko. Um, so we don't hit the Max Elixir. Can we hit it again? Yes. Um, do I attack with Tapu Koko? I might as well. So you're sort of seeing the power of this here, as turn two we've got our Tapu Koko GX powered up, and we are swinging for 140. You do have somewhat of an advantage versus Lapras. Um, if you can play around it, because discarding your energy is difficult for them because you're moving it around so much. Um, you can sort of get off very quickly. Plus, if you have the Aether Paradise, uh, it's going to be difficult for them to one-shot you. Their Ice Beam GX really isn't useful because of Tapu Koko's ability. Uh, I haven't seen any kind of, like, disruption cards. So this might be, like, Water Box Lapras. I'm going to end here. I don't want to lose the Aether Paradise. Um, yeah. So we've got our Max Potions and our Tapu Koko. I'd love for my opponent to sort of like do something to us so we can uh, <laughs> uh, show off that. Uh, I'm going to hold the Fighting Fury Belt for now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna hold it for now. I don't really see the need. Well, I'll just throw it down on Jolteon. Stop that from being a, being a target. And we will Sky High Claws again for the knockout on this Lapras GX. Take our first two prizes of the game. So we get a Raikou and a Lightning Energy. Fantastic. 
Yeah, Raikou is just such a good card in this list because you can throw your energy on it whenever you want. Um, yeah. So again, if my opponent Ice Beam GX is here, we can show off our uh, Tapu Koko's ability yet again. And we can also show off our Max Potion play. We see Max Elixir. VS Seeker for N. Okay. That's fairly standard, I would assume that. So we're getting end here, down to four cards. But <laughs> we get end into our Tapu Koko and Max Potion. Um, this Pseudo Wudo, that's interesting. Roadblock. Your opponent can't have more than four benched Pokemon. If they have five or more benched Pokemon, they discard bench Pokemon. Um, yeah, so we are going to show off our arrow trail. I'm going to move all of the energy off of Tapu Koko. We're going to switch into the active and we are going to max potion our bench Tapu Koko. Heal all of that damage and we are going to sky high claws yet again. Unfortunately, we don't have a Fighting Fury Belt, so my opponent uh, can knock us out with Blizzard Burn if they find a Rough Seas. But it doesn't look like they are going to be able to do that, so they're just going to hit us with Blizzard Burn here. Um, and they're going to Lysander. Lysander this Tapu Koko with the Fighting Fury Belt. I don't know, I, I really wouldn't do that. Um, but yeah, like I said, this can be an issue if sort of later in the game our opponent Lysanders a Tapu Koko and just sort of stalls with it. Um, but yeah, I, like there's nothing we can do here. I don't really want to Lysander anything. Uh, my opponent doesn't have a Rough Seas, so playing the Stadium down is... Um, Pointless, or impossible, <laughs> for that matter. But yeah, my opponent can attack. Uh, they do have the mana fee, so they can retreat and take a knockout here. Uh, but they just decide to collect, which I don't know if I would agree with. Um, we can Tapu Lele here. Yeah, that's probably our best bet. A Skyla in this list would be interesting. Um, but we can Tapu Lele. We can search our deck for a supporter card. Um, wish we didn't throw down our Jolteon so we could Ninja Boy into it. Um, but yeah, we are just going to... Is our escape rope in there? No, it is not. Okay. Yeah, we've already used our escape rope, so we can Sycamore and hope to hit some energy, sort of force our opponent to knock us out. Um, but I don't really want to lose both of our Aether Paradises, plus our Raikou and a Lysander, which is very important. Um, I think I'm just going to end because my opponent has such a large hand size. Uh, I don't mind bringing myself down to four cards. As we hit the max potion as well, which is really nice. Max potion plus max elixir. Uh, we can throw this down onto our Jolteon. And we can max potion our Tapu Koko. So Tapu Lele coming in clutch there, uh, a Shaman wouldn't have really been helpful <laughs> in that uh, situation, so that's where Tapu Lele really shows off uh, how good it is. So our opponent has a lot of energy on the field, so we are primed for a big uh, Tapu Thunder GX. So our opponent is going to Hex Maniac us. Um, 
which is kind of smart. I don't really want to throw down the Raikou just in case um, we don't have a Sycamore in the discard pile. That is annoying. And we don't hit an energy off of this either. So that's again annoying. Uh, we do have the Field Blower, which is pretty nice. Um, the Ultra Ball, do we have another? I'm not sure if our Tapu Koko is prized, so. Let's find out. So we're going to pull that out uh, just to sort of scare our opponent because we can't play it. Uh, but I just want to show our opponent that we have a way to attack next turn. Um, or we can't because of the pseudo wudo. Wow. That's why. Man, I knew there I knew there was something that I knew that I couldn't play that Tapu Koko down. Um, yeah, so just because we haven't been hitting energy, this is quite painful. Um, and our opponent just isn't knocking us out. Yeah, now they're going to take the uh, knockout on this Tapu Koko, which is painful. Um, that they were able to hit all those plays. But, we do finally pull the Lightning Energy. VS Seeker for N. Give ourselves four cards. We finally hit a Sycamore, which is nice. Um, but we're just going to flash Ray right here. 80 damage to this Lapras. And uh, not only can it not attack, but it cannot retreat and uh, go into this Lapras and attack. Collect is really the only option as we do need our Aether Paradise because that Rough Seas is hurting us. I don't really want to... Um... Oh, they're gonna lie, Sander. Oof. Painful. And Blizzard Burn for Knockout. So the Lysander plays, that's what hurts Jolteon here. Um, I need Fighting Fury Belt. Ugh, okay. I can put the Choice Band on Lele. Um, and just Sycamore here. I don't want to put this Tapu Koko down as it's just another target for my opponent. Uh, but we are going to throw down this. Um, and we hit a Super Rod, which is lovely. We can bring back a Tapu Koko and two energy. That seems pretty good. Throw that back into the deck and we have our Ninja Boy. Um, my opponents played three VS Seekers and two Lysander, so they really only have one out to Lysander left. Um, as I'm I'm sure they're searching for it to see if they have it. Maybe they've got a Shaman in hand or something to play down, hoping for that VS Seeker for Lysander for game. Um, as they do hit the Rough Seas, which heals so much damage. You see the Aqua Patch here. But next turn we can Aether Paradise. Um, this choice band is oh Pokemon Ranger. Man, they play Pokemon Ranger. Wow. Okay. Um, so we're going to Rough Seas here because we can. Um, 
Oh, wow, Ranger. I never thought Ra Ranger just isn't played now. Uh, we're going to drop the Aether Paradise and. I can Ninja Boy into Tapu Koko and take a one shot, but then my opponent just comes in and wins. Um, really, my best bet here is to Flash Ray and hope that their last VS Seeker is prized. Um, yeah, because taking a knockout here just isn't going to be productive. Because um, my opponent just comes in and one shots. So. We're gonna, yeah, so there's the VS Seeker for Ranger. Well played to my opponent. Um, my opponent really just had everything in this matchup. The Pokemon Ranger when they needed it, the Lysanders when they needed it. Um, so we lose this game, unfortunately, but uh, we are going to play one more with Tapu Koko. Hopefully, we'll be able to go two out of three with this deck list. As we look for our opponent. Yeah, this deck list is just so much fun playing this. Um, there's there's a lot of the metagame really isn't formatted to deal with it yet. Uh, not that there's really much you can do to deal with it. As I wonder what this is. This might be the new Garbodor. Uh, Just psychic colorless. If it's Mega Mewtwo, that's good because our Tapu Thunder GX will um, be very nice. As we see, Lele. This could be like Lele Garb. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, seeing the DCE here, it might be Lele Garb or. Uh, Lele Wob. Yeah. Top of Lele Wobbuffet is a thing. If we hit these Max Lixers, we can attack this turn. <laughs> Which is not so. Show me a supporter. Show me a draw supporter. Professor Kikui. Good enough. Um, do I dig for the choice band? That would be ridiculous if we can pull this off. Uh, but we are going to get all of our energy down onto our Tapu Koko. We are going to Ultra Ball. Um, we're probably not going to get it, but I just want to try. As this would be just so fantastic if we could pull off a uh, one shot on a. Uh, Uh, well, we don't get it, but uh, we're going to throw down the Aether Paradise and Sky High Claws for 150. Again, we don't get the Choice Band, which kind of stinks, but not like we really overextended to get it. Um, yeah, so not a problem. If my opponent doesn't have a Pokemon here, then they lose the game. So we see Parallel City, so I'm definitely thinking this is Lele Wobbuffet. Um, I don't know how insanely rich you have to be in order to... Lele Garbodor. Wow, that's interesting. Um, I don't think this one shots us. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 2 is 1. 40. So, a choice band will one hit KO us. Uh, but we see the Fighting Shree Belt drop onto the Tauros here. Ultra Ball, probably digging for that choice band, I would assume. We see a Secret Rare. No, just going for the Trubbish. Hmm. <laughs> His energy drive does 140, yeah, so. We are going to uh, 
take a big knockout here. I am going to N. Um, I really don't want to lose all of those resources right now. Uh, trainer Mail, always before we max potion. We got the Fighting Fury Belt, which is nice. We don't have an Aether Paradise, which is a little annoying. Uh, right now we have 30. We can bump that up to 70 and get rid of the Tauros' Fighting Fury Belt. So we'll throw this down onto... Yeah, so we'll Field Blower, we'll get rid of the Stadium and the Tauros' Fighting Fury Belt, which is nice. And we are going to Sky High Claws for Knockout. Let's see, Max Potion plus Energy. So, yeah, the reason I d made that series of plays attaching the Fighting Fury Belt was we have 70 HP left. Uh, so he needs a Fighting Fury Belt plus a DCE in order to knock us out. Uh, yeah, so... We see the trash Lanch Garbodor come out. Uh, and the Choice Band, that'll do it. Horn Attack for 90, which gets the knockout. A little unfortunate. I don't really like that, but um, hmm. yeah, there's thinking of what I can do here. Well, Max Potion is useless, um, as is this energy. If I have to, I can uh, escape rope. I can Tapu Lele for a Lysander. Yeah, I think my best bet is probably like to uh, Tapu Lele for a Sycamore. Yeah. Him knocking us out put us in a bad position being able to find that choice band. Um, I am going to escape rope here just because my opponent has no float stones on the bench and all of these are heavy retreaters. So. Yeah, my opponent is going to throw up the Tauros, I'm going to throw up the Raikou, and we're going to Sycamore. Okay, I think I want to throw back in the Jolteon and two energy. Which is nice. Um, yeah, really not much I need to do here. Yeah, I'm just going to hold. Because if my opponent throws down an energy, um, we can Tapu Koko, Fighting Fury Belt, Aether Paradise Conservation Area, Tapu Thunder GX for knockout. Which would be very nice to uh, complete that series of plays. But they do only throw down a regular psychic and I have, I have so many items in my discard that like yeah so we're gonna see the Olympia and we're just going to you can Olympia into this Garbodor yeah and trash a lanch for knockout um, yeah 280 like Garbodor is broken um, I really don't know why they printed that card, but 
I want some more staying power here. Tapu Koko GX technically has more HP than um, Garbodor, or than Raikou. But does it, like, if we're just going to get knocked out, does it really matter that much? As this is going to do the requisite damage anyway. Um, I really, I need energy. That's what I need. Yeah, so. I really wanted to get down some energy this turn. Uh, we'll grab the VS Seeker. Like, playing items doesn't matter now. <laughs> Uh, Thunder Lance is going to take this out, do 120 damage. Um, we do get the Choice Band, which is nice. Because we do have the Kakui play for a knockout on something. Um, yeah, but he's just going to trash a Lanch again here, like... There's, there's no, I, yeah, I, like, Garbodor is just such a ridiculously good deck. Um, for one energy, the amount of damage that it can do is just unfair. Um, the hate towards item cards, I never really understood. Um. Yeah, Pokemon always plays so many cards where you can, um... <laughs> well played. What, is this just like over now, buddy? <laughs> like, <laughs> chill out there. Um... What, is there like no combination of cards, um... Yeah, there's probably like no combination of cards that uh we're going to end him but yeah there's 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 nothing we can do i think I, yeah i think we've just lost <laughs> um yeah so we're just gonna concede um Yeah, so there we go. That is the Tapu Koko GX deck battle. Uh, we did pick up two losses and only one win, uh, but I think the one win was... The, the last game was very close versus Lapras. Uh, I think it was closer than it was, than it appeared. Uh, we just missed a couple cards, and they hit a couple cards uh, at important times in the game. And Garbodor is just like... I feel like it's just a broken deck. Um... Yeah, you, you, may, you build a good deck list with that and you're not going to lose. Because uh, what does your opponent do? Not going to play item cards? Like, um, yeah. So I really think that card um, is just unfair. Um, I usually don't advocate that cards should be banned, but I really think that that card is just too overpowered. The ability to do that much damage for that small amount of energy just because your opponent was playing the game. Um... It literally stops your opponent from playing the game, which I which I always don't like um, in terms of a card. Seismitoad X, Trevenant, the car, uh, Vile Plume, the cards that just make half your opponent's deck useless. Um, yeah. So there we go. Those are my opinions on uh, stall decks. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching Tapu Koko GX. I am super hyped for this deck. I really enjoy the uh, the uh, cha the. What am I looking for? I really enjoyed the opportunity to show it off to you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed too. I'm going to be showing off a lot more Guardians Rising decks, so definitely stick around for those. So, again, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and stick around for more videos.